And this is the stage where there'll be a challenge or a few challenges that come up where if you judge, it feels like living hell. This stage right before awakening, where it starts to get pretty challenging. It's almost like, what happened? I got dropped. I'm in this place where everything's feeling pretty connected and I'm seeing things with, with optimism and enjoying life. And I, I can tell that I let go of the things that didn't serve me. And I, I'm in a place where I'm not like hanging on or, or doing things that didn't serve me in the past. And all of a sudden, what happened? And this is the stage where there'll be a challenge or a few challenges that come up where if you judge, it feels like living hell. You've come too far along to be able to uh, be and know that, that the divine is real. First of all, you've gotten a lot of tangible firsthand experiences of the miraculous. You have a connectivity so that you can feel and sense this, this benevolence of the divine. You already know that this isn't just contrived, that the, the divine does have your back, but what's going on? All of a sudden, someone who you love the most does something awful and, uh, or dismisses you or drops you. And then you're looking for peace, but it doesn't make any sense. So that's when the only answer is to love it. I don't know what this is, but I love it. Now, I can tell you that we talk about that all the time here in the Miracle Meeting Place as a solution. But when someone gets to this place where they feel wronged and they feel as though they have a grievance that they have every right to hold, then all divine sanity can go out the window. <laughs> and that is not a very happy place to be. Because again, you've gotten tastes of the divine and touches of the divine. And I know everyone here, you wouldn't be here in a place where we hold the space for the miraculous, and unless you really believe this. But then when this happens, and you're looking for someone else to change, in order for you to be happy, someone else to wake up in quotes, because at this point you have all the words, you know, all these things about awakening, you know, all the things about meditation, you know, things about how to choose sanely. But at that moment in time, you're not choosing it yourself because you want someone else to do it first. Now, the challenge here in all of this, I'm going to talk top of the mountain. We're going to go right to the top of the mountain again, is that in your own world that you came to when you decided to dream a dream of separation from the divine as a fun joke, and then this world arose that you came into, when you came here, the only thing to do was love it. And that is the path that keeps us perpetually connected to the divine. You don't have to solve any problems. You don't have to fix anybody. You don't even have to really do anything at all except for appreciate it. And so when someone's having a hard time and they're disconnected and you love them, by nature of loving them, you feel like you get sucked into their challenging time. And so some of these situations where, okay, I'll use uh, experience mother-daughter, where there's been a pretty great and copacetic relationship all along. And then at some point in time, one of them decides that they're going to make a decision that's not really the norm for their copacetic relationship. And in that relationship, one of them forgets who they are. And that's a clue right there if someone forgets who they are for you to remember even more substantially who you are and who they are that they have temporary amnesia 
And if someone has temporary amnesia, you don't address what they're doing while they're in amnesia. You remind them who they really are. And by loving them as they are, no matter what they're experiencing, you are reminding them. It's a much faster and easier path, but so often people will say, I, I can't believe she's treating me this way. I can't, I can't let her treat me this way. I can't be in relationship with this because I'm just, it's like, I, it's like I'm a doormat. I'm getting walked all over. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is, is you, if you address the symptoms, you're stuck in that symptomatic situation. What you want to do in this place where you default to your divinity always as the solution, the one who loves unconditionally, you remember the things that you absolutely love about this person or the relationship when it was ever, even for five minutes, even for a split second, it's best. And you allow yourself then to relate to them in a way that you're speaking to their infinite potential to be beyond the situation that they're in right now. And if in fact you feel that you have to engage them in any way that's conflictual or judgmental or adversarial in any way, then don't do it because you're much better off going and sitting by a lake or doing something fun and happy, go petting a dog, taking time to get your hair done, go and get a massage, then, then at that moment in time, addressing someone who's disconnected, if they're going to make you feel disconnected, then it's just a bunch of nothing. It's being wrapped up in the illusion of things instead of the solution of things, which is always going to be your divine you're perfect, they're divine, they're perfect, you forgot. So if you treat it like temporary amnesia, then you're in a place where you have a lot of power because you can use your imagination, you can use your capacity to be creative, you can use your awakened self to begin to course correct that situation. And so I want to make sure that you're seeing something here. I'm not saying that you put yourself in the path of challenging situations where people might have harmed you in the past or could possibly harm you in the future. You recognize when someone has temporary amnesia that they have to play it out sometimes in their own world and make some really awful choices. And especially if you love them, it's hard to watch. So don't watch it. And that sounds like I'm saying that you're not being very compassionate or kind or loving, if they want you engaged, they will ask. And anyone here who's been on a spiritual path for any period of time knows that if you offer even the most genius insight or wisdom and help that can bring somebody up when they seem to be drowning, if they didn't ask for it, they are not going to accept it at that time and they see it as an assault. So that kind of frees you from having to fix or change anyone or anything. Instead, what it makes you have to do is recognize that this part of you that's connected to everything and everyone, this divine part, this divine self, that's only love, that if you connect to this part of you in your own world, you're now aligned with the most powerful power in the universe you're now aligned with the part of you that's sanity and, and creativity and genius. So in your own space, letting go of all grievances, even if that's really, really making you want to get in there and, and address it or fight it or, or just go in and, and do something that brings you into the world of unconsciousness, just know that it does. It connects you back with everything that's not in your best interest.